If you've watched the show, you might just think to yourself, isn't this just your average rom-com story about a homeless teenage girl who lives in a tent which gets destroyed so she conveniently has to live with a bunch of potentially attractive guys? Okay, I feel like I made that sound weirder than I meant, but biblical themes? Really? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about. Now, anime in general, but in specifically Christian circles, gets a bad rap for kind of being weird, potentially satanic, not to mention cringy. Is any of that true? Maybe. Is all of that true? Potentially. Ahem. And now, because it's become such a popular mainstream thing, I find people who didn't grow up with it have a hard time understanding, and they're kind of weirded out. But anime is like any other genre, like books and movies. There's good and bad in both, and while this video is not a defense of the genre as a whole, I hope it does serve as an example of the beautiful amazingness that can come from it. So here you go, a video you can show your mom that you're not crazy and spiraling down a world that will lead to your shame and eventual doom. Anime can be good. Like, morality kind of good. Also, story good. That too. Really, I just want an excuse to yap about this show for as long as possible. Thanks for joining! I do want to mention, in case you couldn't already tell, I am in fact a Christian. God is not just an idea and a concept to me. He's not just some standard of moral code I'm trying to follow. He's a God that I love and live with every day of my life. And since he's the literal best thing that's ever happened to me, he definitely affects how I see life and stories. And also, this video is mostly intended for people who have already watched this anime, so you know what the heck I'm talking about as I jump around. And if you're on the side that hasn't watched the show, please note that this will absolutely be brimming with spoilers. I seriously recommend watching the show and experiencing it on your own. I could literally go on and on about this series, but for this video, I'm just going to focus on some of the bigger moments and characters that really stood out to me from a Christian perspective. Alright, let's start off with... Oh, wait. Wow. The show has a lot. This is gonna take a while. Fruits Basket is one of my favorite anime of all time. I've rewatched it all the way through probably like eight times. Mostly like introducing it to friends and family members. There's a reason it's so good. Because unlike many of the stories I watch and read, although it may distract me and entertain me, it leaves me with no lasting hope or value. Fruits Basket is one of those stories you won't be able to get out of your head for weeks. It showcases many of the turmoil of feelings that life throws at you and puts words to other feelings you didn't even recognize in yourself. Although there's nothing in this anime that expresses anything openly pointing towards God, I find that many of the reasons I love this anime so much is that, to put it simply, they have at least some sort of respect and morals, unlike most of today's media. On the outside, this show looks like a straight-up teen girl drama, but please, don't let that deceive you. Every single person, guy or girl, I've showed this to, has come away liking it. Cute guys or no. Cute girls, too. They're also cute girls. I'll start off with the main character, Toru Honda. Now, I could do a whole video dedicated to this character alone. I've never in any other story seen a character like Toru. She exhibits a genuine selflessness that is very much not common in today's media. In today's world of girl bosses and strong protagonists, Toru is a sharp contrast to all of that. She's feminine and caring, she wears skirts, she cooks, she cleans, she cries a lot. Oh, wait, I think I know why I really do her so much. I guess for me it's just nice to see a girl being a girl. But regardless, it actually means so much to me that a character is broken, that does cry, and people do see her pain and it really is okay to be a girl. I've talked to many different people and heard many opinions on her character. Some people look at her as a pushover and too nice, but as I watch her, I can't help but think her character is full of Christ-like attributes displayed in a very much non-perfect way like the world we live in. She's humble and kind. She doesn't want to be an inconvenience to anyone and never fails to put others first. Some people think this makes her a pushover, but I think that it actually makes her stronger than any of them. 
She puts others first and represents the very verses that say, let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor, and do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you not only look to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Christ did these very things, and yet he is not weak or a pushover. Another one of her characteristics is her sometimes forced positivity. Although she's been through a lot, she makes a very conscious effort to be positive. That doesn't mean she doesn't cry, but she does try to be strong for others and help them in whatever way she can, even if it's just a smile. People criticize her because they say no one can be happy all the time. And although that may be our experience, I don't think that's one the Bible and Christ calls us to. Phrases like rejoice always, rejoice in tribulation, are not verses meant to be a temporary mode. That doesn't mean we can't mourn or cry. <laughs> I might actually do that a lot. But the Bible calls us to live like this, always rejoicing, to remember that we have a hope always bigger and always better than anything we may be going through. How could we not when we have a very real and present God who moved heaven and earth to face down death itself for our sake? I feel like gratefulness and joy are something central to Toru's character. Not only does she see the best in any given situation, but she sees the good in others. She talks about how her mom taught her to believe in others, and she holds to that. Specifically, there's a scene when trying to understand Kyo and Yuki, she finally gets that they're jealous of each other. She uses an analogy of a plum and rice balls, and how easy it is to see what others have and we don't. Although it's something we all go through, this scene reminded me a lot of Corinthians, when Paul is talking about how we're all members of Christ's body with different roles, all necessary. Another aspect of Toto's character that I appreciate comes more towards the end of the anime, and that's her reaction to Kyo's confession. He's been tortured with the fact that he could have saved her mom, but he didn't, instinctively choosing to protect his true form instead. Oh, yeah, did I mention they're cursed to turn into animals? Ahem, <clears throat> I did mention the anime was weird earlier, right? This is a whole narrative essentially crafted around the idea of the Chinese zodiac. And while that's not a Christian idea, it doesn't play a huge role in the story theme-wise. It's mostly used as a plot device. Anyway, even though this event is the worst thing that's ever happened to Toru, she doesn't play into the drama like most shows would have you. Instead, she actually forgives him right after he confesses, seeing past what he's done to who he is. He's actually the one who can't forgive himself. Again, this is Toru displaying a characteristic of God and his immediate willingness to forgive. Her forgiving nature is actually something shown in her character throughout the entire show. Different characters are always insulting her and judging her basically the whole time, yet she never lets it affect how she sees them or her actions towards them. I really like her. The next character I want to mention is Yuki Soma. Yuki is another one of the guys that Toru lives with. Having been neglected and abused, Yuki suffers from a lot of depression and self-loathing. His arc is definitely one of the more satisfying to watch as the series progresses. Now, to be honest, I've never really been fond of stories trying to depict mental health, because I feel like they either aren't realistic or all they do is preach going to therapy. In reality, this is such a complicated, not to mention spiritual problem, so I find I really dislike the way most media depicts it. They tend to make the character their illness instead of just making a character with depth. Not only are they overly preachy, but they leave me feeling no hope. This anime is different. You can feel the realness that this anime brings. It doesn't simplify it or dumb it down, it just shows it for what it is. And I think they do a great job with Yuki's character specifically. One of my favorite scenes is when Yuki is talking to his younger cousin Kisa. When she's introduced, it's clear she also suffers from shame and self-loathing, and this makes her refuse to speak. There's a scene where she gets a letter from her teacher trying to convince her to go back to school. So I'll insert that right here. The most important thing you can learn is to love who you are. Find something good about yourself and look to it when you're feeling down. If you hate yourself, how can others appreciate you? Self-love is the most important love we have. I hope of all my lessons you remember this one. Kisa, I get it. I'm the same as you. There was a time when I stopped speaking. For different reasons. Regardless, I talked to no one. And... 
I felt so embarrassed those days. I truly hated myself. I was so lost. So, I'm not sure your teacher's actually right. What does self-love even mean? How do we begin to try and find something good about ourselves when we're trapped in darkness? The whole reason we despise ourselves is because we can only see the parts we hate. So forcing ourselves to find good things feels pointless, like we'd just be making them up. It's a nice sentiment, but that's not how life works. Instead, I think it's when someone else says they love you that you're finally able to start loving yourself. When someone truly accepts who you are, that's when you can start to forgive yourself and suddenly see the good things you had all along. Those words are contrary to popular culture nowadays, where everyone everywhere is always telling us just to love ourselves and that no one can love us unless we first love ourselves. This was honestly the first time I really heard anyone in fiction say anything different. It was so refreshing to hear those words because they're true. That's our relationship with God. That's exactly what it says in 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. Another one of my favorite scenes is near the end of the anime, where Yuki's heading up to meet with Machi after fighting with Kyo. Yuki says something that summarizes much of the series and honestly much of life. If only it could have been possible to go through life without any missteps. But it's not. We fail. We stumble. We get lost. We make mistakes. The path is there. We just have to keep walking it, one step at a time, on our own two feet, however much we get hurt. We have to move toward that something, or that someone, at our destination. I find this is such an accurate description of the life we live as a Christian specifically. As we grow and mature, we stumble and fail, yet with his help we're ever slowly moving towards Jesus, that someone at our destination. This scene also immediately calls to mind the passage in Philippians 3. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Next, I want to mention Kyoko Honda. I love this character. She's Toru's mom who died before the story even starts, but she has a fully developed character and basically every flashback she's in, she is spitting facts and humor. But one part that sticks out to me in all of her awesome scenes is one where she's talking to Uo-chan, one of Toru's friends, who just got beat up trying to leave her gang. Kyoko also used to be a gang member, so she came in and got Uo-chan out. There's a scene of them walking back home that has just always stuck with me. You know, this wasn't so bad. You had someone kind in the gang looking out for you. Many people have gone through a lot worse trying to get out. You really are a lucky one. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't learn anything till I get hurt. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> one thing I've discovered is that sometimes you can't understand your feelings until you make trouble and get hurt. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know how we feel until we're at our worst. Then it all becomes clear. You can rebel against what's pure, but then when you find yourself filthy, you start to long for the very thing you turned away from. You have to know gentleness to feel pain, just as you only notice the darkness if you have the sun. You can't underestimate either because everything has its purpose. So, even if you screw up sometimes, it's never for nothing. As long as you make sure you recognize that, those mistakes will nourish you and help you grow even stronger. 
least, that's my theory. <laughs> I know and have been that very person. She speaks so accurately to rebellion and also to the light we often reject. I just really love that whole scene. And lastly, we come to one of the most fascinating characters in the whole series, especially in terms of symbolism. Akito Soma. In this complicated web of the Zodiac, there's one at the top, the one filling the role of quote-unquote God in the puzzle and the legend. My first time watching the show, when this side of the story came out, I was kind of disappointed because I didn't want to deal with the morals of the show trying to twist the figure of God and make him into a villain, like the trend I've been seeing in Marvel and other mediums. But what I didn't expect was one of the deepest parallels and lessons from this very character. Although I acknowledge the fact that, of course, it's not a representative of God by any means. Not only is Akito Soma a woman, but a pretty nasty one at that. But instead of going the direction I thought the show would, I was pleasantly surprised to see symbolism in her role that I actually agreed with. Akito's whole life and character is spent manipulating others and doing anything she can to keep them close to her using the magical bond that ties their emotions to her. And eventually, after the curse is broken, she has to face the fact that she could be alone forever, but the potential of someone staying and loving her by their own free will is worth it. In the same way, God doesn't want forced love and forced bonds. Love is only true if it's given freely. That's why he gives us a choice. And this is something that I just find so beautiful. God loves us, died for us, and gives us a way to be restored back to him. But he will never force anyone to come to him. He draws us and asks us to come, but he doesn't make us. He wants a relationship and genuine, freely given love. So yeah, this is just a random video I've been wanting to make for a while. I'm sure I missed some things, but those were the big ones that came to mind. Like I said before, I could go on and on about this specific topic and anything related to Fruits Basket. In my opinion, I don't think any anime will ever top it for me. Thank you for sticking through the whole thing, and also a thank you to those who've subscribed and stick to my channel despite my horrible inconsistency in making videos. You guys don't realize how much of an influence and motivation you are to me. So yeah, thank you. Thank you.